All right, guys, we're gonna go ahead and pop in here. <laughs> Get it, pop in, and uh, take a look and see what John's doing. He's doing something in there. What are you doing? Hey, um, I'm actually going in and cleaning up around all the fixtures, and that was painted yellow when I got the original thing back. Oh, you decided to keep it yeah, that I got color. Bronze. Cause I think it looks better. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I didn't even realize that. Yeah. And then earlier, earlier I did this guy. I got him back brown. He was completely yellow. So I just been cleaning up all the trims and edges and everything. This is what it looks like with the tape cut off. Doesn't it look so much better? That ugly wood paneling is all gone. Bye bye. It looks so much better. All right, guys. I will show you some of the um, patchwork that we did on the canvas. It didn't need too much. All right, so here, me and Charles just did some iron-on patches. There was a pretty significant hole in there, so we ironed this on and put a patch right on the other side the same. Yeah, so both sides of the camper are patched. Um, if we can find it. Oh. Right there. We did a little patch down there, if you guys can see that. So, and then there's a couple old patches that were not done by us that we're probably gonna buy uh, some iron-on patches and take out their patchwork and put our own, just because uh, this is what they did. Here, let me show you guys. Doesn't that just look like crap? So, it's all gluey and crusty. So we're gonna try some iron-on patches over that so it just doesn't, cause I mean, if you're gonna have patches, I mean, at least keep them looking clean and nice. So we're planning on doing that. I did not get much of anything done today because uh, I pulled a muscle in my neck and I wasn't feeling well. Oh, another thing we did. Um, the guy we bought the camper from, the guy who originally had it, that he bought it from, where the, where this all comes together, he had it um, Velcroed with here, with press and peel Velcro, and it kept coming undone. Well, we bought new Velcro, and we were like, well, instead of having it try to stretch to be on the back, let's put the Velcro on the side. Well, we were running into the same problem that he was. Whereas you pull the Velcro, oh shit, look at that, that's some crap. So what we're in the process of doing is, right, let me show you this guys, this is pretty fun. How we fix this, this was pretty innovative I think. Oh, bend to the neck, all right. So, what we did, is we bolted the Velcro on. So it doesn't come off every single time we take this on and off to stow the top away. And then John sewed the Velcro to the canvas. So we don't have to worry about this coming undone now when we go to put it away every single time we pop, or, pop her or put her away. Is it the most ideal fix solution? No. It's better than it was, that's for sure. So, John, uh, oh, he put a new light bulb inside the uh, camper. It gets pretty hot, and I don't think it's quite the right light bulb, but it works. Um, I think we're going to probably eventually rip that out and put an LED in. It's actually pretty bright. I'm excited to see what it looks like at, at night. I think it's all we'll need, honestly. Huh? I think it's all we'll need. Instead yeah. of running those lanterns. We'll probably bring the lanterns in as a case of a backup, maybe. I got these really cool lanterns that are also bug zappers, as you can see it over there. It's not melting. Well, that's good. And I can hold my hand on it. It's hot, but it doesn't, like, it doesn't burn me. That's good. So. <laughs> In cool enough temperatures, it'll probably heat the damn camper. Right. And yeah, I'm sure you guys can also see these 
window dressings that um, we're not really talking about. And we're not really going to talk about it right now because that's for another video. That's coming down the road. Y'all going to have to wait and see how John made these curtains. We did find these really awesome pillows that match. You guys got to admit, for being 30 years old, this is starting to look pretty dang nice, man. This is not the bed decor. I've been a little obsessed with the camper, so last night I slept in it. Yeah, he was a 12-year-old on his way home from the store with a toy and told not to open his toy in the car because he'll lose the pieces, but what does he do anyway? He opens the toy in the car. Y'all know what I'm talking about. But anyway, so uh, eventually there's going to be two more curtains. Or four more, actually. Two on that side to close the bed up. And two on this side to close this bed up. They go up in those tracks. Um, I've also got some things coming to where we can make our own awning. Because there's a track right up here for an awning slides in there so I'm gonna make an awning because I'm not paying three hundred dollars for an awning that's like almost half of what we paid for the camper it's ridiculous um, then uh, some other future projects that are coming all these crusty decals are gonna come off also replace all the lights with LEDs New wheels are coming. I'm going to paint the trailer frame so that we can get, get as much life out of it as possible. And then I'm going to also paint the underneath of the wood. So then that way, um, if the underneath is painted just as we travel and are at campgrounds and whatnot, and if it rains, etc., to, to protect it from the elements of... Uh, and just try to get a few more years out of it. Because, you know... If I can get if I can get five to seven years out of this camper, I'm gonna be pretty happy. Considering a brand new pop-up camper is like ten thousand dollars. Well, if you can find a good used pop-up camper, these are the things you want to look for. Does the crank system work? Does the bottom side of the wood look rotted out? And is there rust on the trailer frame? And when I mean rust, I'm talking about, like, not is it just slightly reddished and aged. I'm talking about is it got, like, flaking rust and it's eating through. If the frame is good and the wood is good and the pulley systems work, everything else can be fixed cheaply. Look at how nice this looks already. And outside of this door, ah, outside of what we've paid for the camper we are only about with the floor the paint the tape the tools and everything we've done so far the patches the waterproofing that's that's the other thing we did we waterproofed the outside you guys see us waterproof the inside we were waiting till the painting was done to do that um but we're gonna waterproof in here next and i don't even think we're two hundred dollars into it what do you think i think a gallon of paint was 25 the whole floor was 30 and $6 a can of waterproofing. Um, About $100 in the fabric for the curtains? Yeah, I was going to say the curtains and the pillows were the most expensive so far, but yeah, like maybe 150 bucks in. Yeah. And with the curtains closed, oh my god, what they do for the overall appearance of the inside of this camper are unbelievable. Uh, I'll put a picture in right here. So this right here is a picture of what the camper looks like closed up. Uh, or This is a picture of what the camper looks like with the curtains closed and, um, you know, with the paint job and the accents of the blue cushions that are already in here and the gray floor. You've got the gray of the curtains. It just looks so good. Alright guys, well be sure to subscribe if you haven't yet already and uh, so that way you can stay tuned for our next installment on this 30 year old camper restore. Um, while you're waiting for our next video, be sure you check out our tiny house videos and some of our other outdoor adventures. As always, John and Charles are keeping it micro tiny. 
And now, well, when we're not at the off-grid tiny house down in the Ozarks, who knows where we'll be next because we just might pop up in your neck of the woods. So stay tuned.